Hey DVC fan and welcome to this week's special edition of the DVC show. I am your host Paul Krieger and I am joined by someone who you will become very very familiar with very quickly uh, a dear friend and DVC member Jeff Haslam. He's currently focusing though because this is Surrey Bike Q&A part two and we've also Ooh. got the lovely wife Amy Krieger in the back and we are barreling down a hill as we speak. So uh, thanks for joining us and this is going to be a fun adventure. Surrey bike pointer number one is to know where the brake is and how to use it. We just barreled down a hill <laughs> if you couldn't tell from that intro. But I don't really feel like doing it again so we're going to leave it as is. Uh, if you like this content that we have here on DVC Fan, please show some love for our sponsors over at the World of DVC. DVC Resale Market where you can buy or sell a Disney Vacation Club contract. Monera Financial where they can help you with that contract purchase. And DVC Rental Store where you can try before you buy, rent some points, or rent out your own points. I'm not sure if I told you guys that Amy was here or not, but Amy is here. She's in the back and just holding on for dear life at this point. So I made Jeff steer this time because at boardwalk it was fine but there there wasn't traffic and cars and things and i was a little bit scared uh this time but but jeff doesn't seem to like using the brake so <laughs> i don't know how this is gonna go i would also like to point out that make sure before you get into the bike that you check that your canopy here the yellow canopy up top i just did it again it, make sure that it doesn't have water built up on it because I have basically put water in my lap twice now. So I'm all ready for the pool once we finish. We are at Saratoga Springs today for this second edition, but we're going to answer some of your viewer questions and get to know Jeff Haslam a little bit more. All right, Jeff, first question of the day. Did you know what you were signing up for before you got here? I, I did not. <laughs> I did not know I was driving. I thought I was going to be long for the ride, but... They put their life in my hands, which will be the last mistake they ever make. We trust you. <laughs> in Jeff, we trust. Jeff, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and uh, where you own Disney Vacation Club. Yeah, so I'm Jeff. You guys know me from my smart aleck comments on DVC Fan. Um, I've been a member since 2020, and we're going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> We've made it away from our detoured path that we went down a couple minutes ago, but I think... Uh, Somewhere in there, I was asking Jeff to kind of explain to us a little bit about himself, uh, tell us a little bit of his DVC story and uh, where he owns. Yeah, so my name's Jeff. You guys know me from the group, hopefully, or not. That's also fine. <laughs> um, but I'm a, I'm a smart aleck there. That's how I use my humor. And I have been a DVC member since 2019. I bought Sight Unseen um, because we had money left over from COVID that we didn't use. And so I bought it Old Key West. Four times, actually, four times in a row. So that's all I own, but I but I own there. Four times is enough. I yeah. would say you just, I was like add on itis. Like, was it four days in a row as well? Basically, or? like I bought two contracts before the first one closed. Okay, that makes sense. So. Perfect. Yep. That's like instant add on itis, yeah. I would call it. Amy and I actually met Jeff, I think the first time at Vero Beach Resort. I had my face and body pressed against the glass <laughs> of the restaurant there on the outside because I saw Jeff eating in there. We knew he was going to be there, but so I'm not, I'm not that big of a creeper, but uh, yeah, was, was face pressed against the glass and uh, pounding on the window at him. But after that, we actually went on a Disney Cruise Line cruise together and uh, yeah, just become very good friends and uh, happy to have him finally joining us here on the DVC show. And like I said earlier, I think you're going to see a lot more of him because we like it. All right, so our plan for this episode was to answer those questions that we missed the last time that we did. Were we supposed to go that way? Yep. <laughs> All right, we're gonna turn around and then we'll come right back. <laughs> okay, so I have to say that when we did this at Boardwalk, they basically were like, here's your bike, go that way. Uh, this time around, they came out, they gave us this whole big spiel and now I understand why. It's it's a little more difficult here. There's you got to know which way you're going. We've gone the wrong way a couple times and had to back up. So uh, listen to the spiel, follow the signs and the map, uh, and you'll be okay. But our goal for today is that last time when we did the Surrey by Q and A, 
at Boardwalk, we gathered uh, some questions that you guys had and we only got around to answering about half of them. So we promised that we would come back and we would do another Surrey Bike Q&A and that we would get to those questions. Uh, just getting the water <laughs> from the top, hitting him again. Um, sorry about that. Anyway, so uh, the first question, and I'm gonna let Jeff answer this first, uh, then I'm gonna see what, what Paul has to say. But this is from Amy M. And it is, uh, we have contracts at both Grand Floridian and Saratoga Springs and are looking for one more contract in terms of location, so just location, uh, where would you suggest that she buys her next contract? Well, she's got the monorail covered. She has Disney Springs covered, so I'd say Crescent Lake. Boardwalk or Beach Club seems like where I would go if it were me. What do you think, Paul? I will always agree with anyone that says for someone to buy Boardwalk. Uh, what were the two resorts again? Uh, Saratoga and Grand Floridian. Yeah, so at this point you don't have a 2042 resort, so I think it's okay to kind of diversify your ownership to have that in your portfolio. Like, I would never tell someone that already owns at, uh, say, you know, Oki West or something like that to add on another 2042 or same for Boulder Ridge or something. But I think it makes sense at this point, just given that proximity. And there's so many things to do at Epcot, you're gonna wanna have those points there. Yeah. I agree with both you guys. Uh, I would even throw in possibly Riviera because that gives you an Epcot area resort. But for us, just like Jeff said, Boardwalk, Beach Club, you know, walking distance, the two parks, uh, those are the two that have our, our hearts. Coming up in the distance here is the bridge that actually connects Saratoga and the different sections of the resort. We were given a very strong disclaimer. Do not go on that bridge. Uh, so that is strictly off limits to Surrey bikes. It's also very hard just being someone that's a driver to have a steering wheel in front of you that doesn't move. And, uh, and, and, and my entire life is currently in Jeff's hands. And uh, after the first hill, let's just say I have doubts, but we're continuing on. All right, our next question is from Richard G. Uh, do you think Disney would ever offer a paid DVC membership extras option for non-direct owners. Uh, examples could be a one-time per contract upgrade or an opt-in increase to your annual dues to get the benefits. Every time we go around turn, I am clenching my teeth. <laughs> we actually posted an article about this. I would say it's been about a year or more at this point. There were rumors and some surveys going on that Disney was kind of playing around with the idea of a paid perks program. This was, I don't know that it was necessarily written for resale members, but the idea was just having this advanced perks package. But I do like the idea of you could maybe buy in for perks, but I don't think that they're actually ever going to do it. I'm guessing that the survey results didn't make much sense for that, because at the end of the day, Disney's in the business of making money. So they're gonna make a whole lot more money by just convincing you to add on direct eventually, as opposed to trying to give you benefits for like a smaller smaller piece of the pie. What do you think, Jeff? Yeah, I tend to agree. I don't, I don't see that being beneficial to them. Um, one thing I wish they would do that, that kind of curtails into that though is literally every other hotel company in the world offers some kind of rewards program. You know, you stay X amount of nights a year and you can get a free one. And that's something that I really wish Disney would do um, because even us DVC members that stay with our contracts, it, it never fails that once in a while we have to add on a Pop Century here, or a Coronado there, and it would be nice to, to get those benefits as well, just like you do with anybody else. But. Next question is from Larry M. With DVC putting their toe in the water on moderate resorts, i.e. cabins at Fort Wilderness, do you think this is a one-time shot or do you think it may encompass uh, Port Orleans, uh, Caribbean Beach, Coronado Springs, anything like that in the future? Jeff. I don't know. I have, this is, I have a hard time with this question sometimes because I don't think it's a moderate resort just based on that. I think Disney Vacation Club Villas stand on their own. And in fact, they used to have their own kind of home away from home designation when you go to book. Yeah. Um, and so there's no other rooms on property that give us 
kitchens in them, you know? And so I think that's what sets Disney Vacation Club apart. <laughs> I have no idea if I'm going the right direction, but um, yeah, we, we good feel good. Good job not running that person over <laughs> thank you, back there. Thank you, thank you. Very impressive. And so, I don't know, I, I think even though it's at a quote-unquote moderate resort, I think the, the furnishings and what's happening inside is really what makes a Disney Vacation Club villa a Disney Vacation Club villa. doesn't matter on its location. I, for one, am all on board with, with a Port Orleans DVC expansion at some point. That's something that I've wanted for years. But, um, I don't know, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Yep, I'm with Jeff. I don't think there's any rule that says DVC has to be in a deluxe resort. And, and I think you're absolutely right. Like, there are other things that make it DVC. It's a vacation club. It's, you know, it's, it's not just deluxe. So we can get into those moderate resorts. And it might just mean that the point charts are lower. Um, you know what I mean? You don't have to diminish the product by lowering the price per point. You can have lower point charts for those resorts, for those rooms. But I, I'm so ready for Coronado Springs, uh, DVC, or even Port Orleans or anything like that. So I definitely agree with Jeff on that one. We're about halfway through our time here on the Surrey bike. I think I mentioned this in the first episode and the payment for Surrey Bike is a little bit different here at Saratoga as it was at Boardwalk. At Boardwalk, we paid first and we paid for a half hour. And I'm pretty sure if we were out for about four hours, they wouldn't have cared. Here, they actually clock you in. So we've all, we're on like a running timer and basically you pay for however long you use it. What that total price is, I'll let you know near the end. But coming up, we've made one lap so far around what is and probably isn't the proper trail that you should be on here at Saratoga. <laughs> Jeff, how are you feeling about Surrey bike rentals? It's hot, but yeah. other than that, this is a riot. This is a good time. Yeah. Something that is a little nerve wracking out here at Saratoga on the Surrey bike is that you are on sidewalks. And so to me, it looks like we get really close to the edge and are going to fall off of the sidewalk. But I, I'm trusting Jeff over here driving. Um, he must he must feel confident in the clearance we've got. Um, you also have to cross the road. So sometimes there's cars or buses. So just, just be careful. Uh, but the scenery is very beautiful. I don't know why Paul has done another one of these in the summer in Florida because it is incredibly hot out here. So when we go and do Old Key West, it's got to be winter. You got to give the audience what they wanted. <laughs> That's what this is about. Here's the hill that you guys love so much. Oh yes. Time. For for all of you that that caught us when we did our intro, this is this is the real life adventure of going down this hill with no brakes. And uh, yeah, I mean. That's the best I'm part. I'm so glad you that's, didn't show my face during that. That's basically like the takeoff that you have during test track. <laughs> I am never going down that little hill with, with Jeff Haslam again on a bike. The next question uh, is from Suzanne E. And she asks, what happens if you take the Surrey bike off of the designated path? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are experts at that by this point. We have done it about three times. So when you get the instructions, again, as Amy mentioned earlier, boardwalk's a lot easier. It's an oval, basically. You can't get lost. You can't go off the path. Here, we have these lovely signs that say Surrey bike traffic. So at this point, we should turn left. However, last time we went straight and into the water. <laughs> Just kidding. We didn't we go did. into the water <laughs> yet. Uh, <laughs> But essentially, you're supposed to follow this. Uh, I would be remiss if I do not show the lovely Disney Springs view that we have. And we had an amphicar that actually just went by us as well. But, so the path throughout here has little signs all along it that'll say Surrey bike traffic, left, right, whatever direction. Now, if you're good at reading and you follow those directions, you should never get lost or get off the path. If you are not good at reading, like all of us currently on this Surrey bike tour, there is big signs after the little sign that says no Siri bike or Surrey bike. Siri. Siri? Yeah. Siri? Siri. My, my phone's going to get really confused. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so there's directions all over the place. Uh, there's also a handy dandy map that's actually down here by the steering wheels that I may or may not have shown earlier. But it's hard to necessarily get lost if you kind of know where you are where you are here at Disney. Uh, but the signs are helpful. Do we pay attention to them? Not always. 
this question, and, and I'm so sorry if I messed the name up, but it is from Acadia I says, I'm not sure if it was announced already, but do you think uh, they will refurb Animal Kingdom Villas or Bay Lake first? And which one do you think needs to be refurbished first and why? Uh, so I can answer the first part. Bay Lake Tower is on the refurbishment schedule for 2004. It is currently the only resort that is listed for 2004. Um, there are three DVC resorts that have not been refurbished recently since you know Oki West was refurbished and those three are Animal Kingdom Villas, Grand Californian, and the last one is the tree houses at Saratoga Springs. So we are hoping to see some of those three, Animal Kingdom, Grand Cal, and the tree houses uh, put on the schedule for 2024, uh, 2025 at the latest. Uh, as far as which one needs refurbished the most, I don't know. What do you guys think? Jeff, have you been to either of these recently? I have, and I'm all in for Animal Kingdom needing a refurb. I'm in the the very rare minority that doesn't actually love that resort. <laughs> <laughs> and it, a lot of it had to do with the design of the rooms, how dark it was. I felt like I was in my grandma's basement. And so <laughs> I think it really needs some love. Murphy beds and brighter colors and yeah and stuff like that so spent yeah, a, spent a lot of time in your grandma's basement <laughs> sometimes i get locked up down there <laughs> <laughs> the the furniture at animal kingdom villas is kind of just clunky i think and and i would like to just see pieces that fit a little bit better still keeping with like the theming and stuff the, like the furniture at copper creek does a really good job if fitting in the room, it's very streamlined, uh, functional, and it's very pretty. I would like to see something like that at Animal Kingdom Villas when it gets refurbished. There are some spicy turns in this, in this route. Okay, we've got a question from Heather I, and they're laughing at me because I said the word okay. I say it too much. Heather I is asking, uh, her question asks if there's gonna be a Skyliner expansion on uh, Floridian Way by the empty plot of land by Grand Floridian. But I think that just brings up a good overall topic of, you know, where where could Disney expand the Skyliner that could end up benefiting some of the DVC resorts? I think that the Skyliner is a very large missed opportunity for expansion already. I was skeptical at first as to whether or not it would stay running consistently because I feel like I guess there are some ski areas that have gondola systems like that that are running year round. But whenever I think of that type of area, you know, I'm from West Virginia. So we have like ski lifts uh, or gondola systems um, and they, they only run for a portion of the year. So the thought of this thing working as well as it has, it's had a couple bumps in the road, but it is extremely consistent. So when you look at the cost of something like this versus like a monorail expansion, it makes a lot of sense for Disney to invest more money there. Um, the only downside is especially during the summer, it's not been as bad this year because we're having kind of an abnormal summer with not as much rain, but it can occasionally go down, which means you've then got to pull the buses out. But easy expansion plots, you know, we've talked about it before. I think a route that connects like Coronado Springs, that connects Animal Kingdom, you know, those are those are some, some easy little expansion plots. Jeff, what do you think? Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Look at the overhead map of the property itself and Coronado to Animal Kingdom seems like a no brainer to me. There's also, if you look up um, going the other direction, Disney Springs to Old Key West and Saratoga actually isn't that far Ooh, out of the realm yeah. either. Yeah. That's a great idea. And so I, I would love to see all the things. Yeah. All the things. Skyliner all the way. Yep. yep. I think you could connect literally every deluxe resort through a Skyliner, you know, with some sort of, you know, these resorts, Saratoga and Old Key West. Jeff's right on a map. They're not that far from Epcot. So connect them to Epcot and then from Epcot you can go, you know, to the other places. Uh, so yeah, I would love to see more. Just a pants update over here. <laughs> My pants are now dry. We've been biking long enough and we're sweating long enough and it's 4 million degrees out here. So don't worry about that water. It's actually quite refreshing that's up on your roof. There is actually still a big puddle of right above Jeff's head. I've been watching it. Yep. There we oh. go. <laughs> that was disappointing. It wasn't nearly as exciting as earlier.
So I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the viewers that I didn't get the footage from earlier. I feel like I did this on our first Surrey bike question and answer, but I'd also like to give a shout out to all the podcast listeners out there. If you are watching this on YouTube, these Monday, the DVC shows, they do go up both on Apple Podcasts and Spotify Podcasts as well as Google Podcasts. So if you want to just listen to an audio version of this show, most of the time they make a lot of sense. Days like today where we're just riding around on a Surrey bike and it sounds a little disjointed, the audio version probably leaves a lot to the imagination, but I'd love to hear probably what you think is occurring on the film as you listen through this. So shout out to all the audio podcast listeners out there and thank you for following along. This is a question that we see in the DVC fan Facebook group all the time. Uh, this is from Frank C. And it is, what do you do with five points that cannot be banked? So we always get people that ask these types of questions. Like I have three points or I have two points and they're gonna expire in you know a few months. What what do I do with them? Um, anyone want to take that one? <laughs> I feel like it's, it's an unfair question for me to answer, so I'm going to go with Jeff first. And I have the same question, so I don't really have an answer <laughs> other than I know I have some points that I need to deal with here pretty soon, so I'm interested to find out what I should do. Yeah. <laughs> At the end of the day, you really can't do anything with a number of points that is less than a single night stay, so you're left with the decision to make. Either you borrow from your next use year and get yourself up to that 10 to 15 point range that's going to get you a single night in a dock studio somewhere and maybe you rent that out with like DVC rental store um, or take a trip yourself uh, and, and sort of use the points that way or unfortunately you really can't do anything with such a small amount of points. I've had this question come to me a lot. I wish, and I've spoken with the team over at Give Kids the World, there's been a lot of people that have wanted to donate their points to Give Kids the World. Um, since everyone at Give Kids the World stays on the village property, it's very rare that they have any need for Disney Vacation Club points or need for rooms on property. The other thing is they don't actually have a DVC contract where they could actually use those points to help supplement their own or anything. So uh, I've had a lot of people approach me over the years about donating points to give kids the world. Um, normally, I just tell those people, you know, if you can rent your points and get some cash and then donate that money to give kids the world, it'll go a lot further that way. But unfortunately, with such a small number of points, you're left to either borrow and get them used or let them die. And with it will go piece part of my heart because anytime a point dies, part of me dies. So one, one of these days I'm going to just whittle away to nothing. Yeah. Uh, can I add to that? Uh, unfortunately, they can't be transferred because banked points cannot be transferred. But to Paul's point, this way? Okay. To sure. Paul's point, uh, you if you don't have any points left to add to it, another option would be to buy some one-time use points from DVC. I believe They've gone up. They used to be 19 a point. What are they, 20 something now? 20. 26, I want to say, but I couldn't make that up. I'll hey. have to look that one up later. It's been a long time since we bought them. Hey, pricey. We'll, but, we'll put a little graphic up on the screen as to how much they are now. Yeah, uh, they're over 20 a point now. But if that if it were me and I didn't have any points left to use and I just had those five points, I would buy some one-time use points because you're still going to pay less than paying like rack rate for a room. And I would book a room for one night with them. Try not to run people over here. <laughs> we just wrapped up our Surrey bike adventure and just an update on the pricing. I know I was going to mention that earlier. So I feel like it's a lot more reasonable here than it is um, actually at Boardwalk. So it was around $27 for 40 minutes. So I think they actually charge you per every 10 minutes as compared to Boardwalk, which was charging you by the half hour. But um, very reasonable, very hot, very sweaty. As you can see, I changed my shirt more so because I got drenched from that uh, water than uh, actual sweat. But gives you an idea of what it would cost for a Surrey bike. That's about it for us. Jeff, what did you think of the Surrey bike? It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. I had a good time and thanks you guys so much for having me on. It's been a blast. 
Yeah, Jeff has a lot of bravery going around some of those turns. It is a sentiment that I do not echo, but I do admire it. So thank you for steering. Uh, it was very awesome having you on the show. Uh, we promised that every show won't be filmed from a Surrey bike, but we did have to do Saratoga Springs by popular demand, and we're hoping to do one at Oki West as well eventually. Uh, that is it for us. Thank you so much for joining us. If you like this content, please hit that like button. Also, subscribe to the channel, the YouTube channel, and join us in the conversation over at dvcfan.com and in the DVC Fan Facebook group. Bye, everybody.